For an upcoming video, I have been buying a few different ultraviolet light sources. I say ultraviolet, some of them are not quite ultraviolet. Uh, this one here is definitely not ultraviolet. This is a tungsten ultraviolet type effect type lamp. It's terrible. But one of the items I got was this. And this is a fairly classic generic import floodlight that is just... I think I've featured in a video before, but I'm not really sure. However, I've also seen a YouTube electrician channel feature this and say we're installing these in a customer's garden. Uh, that's not something you do. The first test I did in this one, given its source, was I got the test meter in, as you can probably guess what I'm going to do, and I went from the earth connection, earth, to screws, nothing, okay. Anything? No, 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 no earth connection to this one. So the earth wire is fake, as it is in so many of the products that are imported directly from China without going through the formal channels. Um, I shall power this one up. It seems fitting to use a dangerous Chinese tester, a dangerous, a dangerous Chinese tester to do this. So I'll just whip this round, I won't really bother connecting, I'm not going to connect the earth to anything, there is nowhere to connect the earth in this. It is, after all, a Chinese tester, so it seems fitting that it doesn't have anywhere to stick the earth. So I'll put this in here, and I'll power it up, and something worthy of note, this isn't ultraviolet light, ultraviolet, but, well, I'll plug it in. I'll plug it in and you can see. So, powering up. And it's very violety. It's certainly making things fluoresce. The power is about 37 watts. Is it tingly? Not tingly. This is good. Any tingle at all off it? Hmm. But these are very, very blue chips. If you consider this is a, another style one where when you turn it on, they're quite kind of a deep violety without any of that blue impurity. Something is fluorescing. I don't think it's the front lens here. I think it is the actual chip carrier. Oh, I think they're multi-chip as well. That's interesting. Anyway, I shall turn this off and we'll take it apart. As we do, that is a double pole switch, just in case anybody's wondering. And the reason it is making repeated noises is because uh, it's programmed for a different wattage of lamp. That is a Chinese tester that just checks if lamps are compliant with their with a, a standard reference. So let's uh, start opening this up. This could take a second, and yeah, that's going to involve lots of unscrewing. So uh, I shall pause momentarily while I do this. One moment, please. The screws are out. I'm noticing that this might be slightly... It is slightly curved, or is it... Oh, blimey, no. It's the, the whole circuit board is kind of like bowing up as well. Um, is there any heat sink compound in the back? Oh, there is. It's sticky. It's sticky. Oh, it's glued the heck? Hold on. Let's drizzle some isopropanol down the back of this. Incidentally, this back plate is not aluminium. It's steel. How's the isopropanol going to work? Am I going to destroy the circuit board? Am I going to kink the circuit board? What is down the back of that? Uh, hot melt glue. That's going to work really well. Uh, I'll, I'll shove a ruler down the back and just try and Slice it off. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, a blob of hot melt glue. That's going to be really great for thermal coupling. That's going to be splendid. That is actually just going to melt, isn't it? And I'm not sure the thermal conductivity. That stuff there, that's just the isopropanol. The back, incidentally, is magnetic. It's steel. It's the cheapest crap about. This is literally going to rust to bits in your garden. Uh, there's the earth wire. Uh, I guess it wasn't making a very good connection, just sandwiched somewhere between the aluminium and steel. That was almost like a, a luck thing that it didn't. And there's a little grommet here. Is the grommet actually sealed round the wire? Anyway, I shall take a picture of the circuit board. Do I need to take a picture of the circuit board? I'll take a picture of the end. Or I'll just doodle it out. That's the best bet, because really, you can pretty much see the circuit board as is. I mean, I'm not going to beat that for a for a high-definition picture, am I? It's quite big. So I shall doodle the schematic down, and we can explore it. But it, there's no great surprises here. It's also notable 
that there are programming options and there's immediately there's a way to actually hobble this to reduce its power without even changing the resistors. One moment, please. Back once again with the Renegade Master D4 Damager Power to the people. Indeed, long time since I've heard that song. I have done a picture, done a picture, uh, which I cropped a little bit to basically... Well, you can see the seam here that I've basically cut out all the LEDs. Notice there are three distinct LED chips per LED. We have the incoming supply here. We've got a fusible resistor with a very odd value, violet green gold. The gold uh, is the decimal multiplier, but it's actually a divider because it's the gold band. So it's 7.5 ohms. That resistor is to limit in rush current, but also to blow like a fuse when things go wrong, which they will. Here is the bridge rectifier that then converts that from AC to full wave rectified AC, which is basically humpy DC with a one meg ohm load resistor across it to stop the LEDs glowing just with leakage through switch wiring. There is a position here for a metal oxide resistor that they've not put in. Then the positive is here. It goes to LEDs. The negative goes up to the voltage regulators and has a common bus bar running underneath them all. And each of the linear regulators has a 6.8 ohm resistor and that uh, goes on to COM bus bar and the LEDs are wired in pairs throughout. And there are a total of 50 LEDs wired as 25 pairs with three chips each. Let me show you the schematic. I'll zoom down a little bit more and then we'll do some experiments. We'll chop one of these resistors out and see if we can reduce the power dissipation. So there's the earth wire just going nowhere. There's live and neutral. Live goes to the bridge rectifier. Neutral via the fusible resistor. Um, one meg ohm resistor to provide a slight load to prevent that slight leakage that causes random glowing. Not such an issue with the ultraviolet LEDs because they are fairly dim looking in the first place owing to the fact that they're at the far end of the spectrum. Here are the linear regulators EV2211B, uh, each with its 6.8 ohm resistor programming the amount of current that they will let through. These also have that internal thermal sense, and if they detect the circuit board getting too hot, it will basically cut cur cur the uh, current back, it will reduce the amount of current going through them. The LEDs are wired as a 25 pairs, three chips each, so that's two. Uh, sets of 75 LEDs gives a total of 225 volts across the LEDs and the rest is dropped across these. I'm guessing the panels will be different in America. Well, they will have to be for 120 volts. A uh, couple of things. Looking back at the circuit board, uh, it did have silicon in the back. There was a big blob of silicon in the middle, which they'd put on and then they'd put a stripe of hot melt glue underneath it and then put it in place so the hot melt glue held it in place while the silicon had a chance to cure. And there's two little holes in this that means they can basically put their glue on and then just sploosh this on and press it down uh, and the hot melt glue will then hopefully cool down and hold it in place. Uh, the little rubber seal, which is moulded onto the end of the wires, which you think, well, that's good, because it's going to stop the water getting in. No, it's not. I drizzled some isopropanol on here, and it promptly found its way down here and started wicking out the end. So water will wick up the inside of this, because your junction, unless it's sealed in uh, silicon goo, uh, usually, well, it's not usually silicon, it's the polymer goo you get for electrical stuff. It will... Uh, if you have a junction box, water will get in. If you've got taped electrical connections like they probably use in these, water will get in and the unit will fill up. It will seep in and it will create a little line of water at the bottom that reaches the electronics and then starts corroding or bridging to the case and current will flow to the case. The case will become live and then the circuit board will fail. That's, that's not much nice to say about this, to be honest. Uh, noting that if the LEDs burn out, they usually start arcing and burning inside. This is an aluminium panel, and uh, it's got a thin shim of fiberglass, literally wafer-thin shim as an insulator, and it'll burn through that, and that's also a point that it can actually conduct onto the case. Lovely. Uh, since these wires are not in very tight, let's just pull the earth wire out, because that's just going to get in the way when we do our experiments now, because we're about to test the power briefly. Uh, then lock one of these resistors off and see if it doesn't like it or not. So I'm going to bring up my little Chinese test box, which I have misplaced. There it is. Here is my little Chinese test box. And we'll check the power. 
initially, which I think was about 35 watts, was it not? And then we'll lop one of those resistors off and we'll see what the power drops to. I would expect it to drop, well, a third for each of these, so let's just remind ourselves what the power was. I shall plug this in. And the power is... Actually, you know what? That's much deeper looking without the cover over it. Let's try that with the cover on and off. No, it's it's not bad. It's, I think they're just quite bright LEDs. They're not the deep violet ones. Okay, right. That was me distracted again. The power dissipation from the panel, I'm just running it briefly because there is no heat sinking like there was before, is about 37 watts. So if I make my modification, I shall unplug this completely while I'm doing that. 37, I'll bring the kink calculator here. Uh, 37 watts divided by 3 equals, if I cut one of those resistors off, it's going to be about, say, 24.6, say 25 watts. It lowers the power to. Let's try that. Which resistor is getting it? Let's chop this one off at the end here. Pow, that's a resistor off. That is its power rating diminished. Let's see if that uh, component now just explodes when I turn the power on. The power has dropped to 21 watts, which is an improvement. Well, 20 watts, it's wavering up and down. Oh, shut up, meter. So yeah, that's uh, definitely going to make it last longer, though it is going to reduce the output. Uh, having said that, the best thing you can do with these, the best hack you can do with them, is to throw them in the bin, quite frankly. And, uh, and let the seller know that the... Just tell them you got an electric shock off it. That should, uh, that should get you a refund. Uh, but there we have it. The completely crap uh, ultraviolet light. Uh, and also they're used as cold white, warm white floodlights. They're just... They've cut the corners too much. They could have used this panel in a decent light. They could have actually clamped it down with heat sink compound in the back. And, you know, when you look at the frame... Okay, it's fair. It's flexible. Yeah, it's it's fairly flexible. It's not going to be great. I don't know how well this seal. It's got plenty of screws. I don't know how well that seal is going to keep the water out of it. It's big and it sticks down quite a lot and it's squishy. So it should theoretically do a fairly decent job of sealing. Yeah, anyway, or maybe it just won't. Uh, but. That, uh, I wouldn't really trust these. Not waterproof, not electrically safe, not earthed. They're just not a good idea. But they are hackable, and that's useful to know.